Hi, my name is Dennis Freitas, and welcome to another online screen tutorial brought to you by YourMacShow.com. Today we're going to be discussing system preferences, so we'll go ahead and get that opened up here from the dock, and we're going to talk about the appearance, the desktop and screensaver, the dock, and expose and spaces. And that, that should take about 10 minutes, and we want to try and keep these videos at about 10 minutes for one, to maintain interest, and two, uh, so we can post them over on YouTube. So we're going to go ahead and get right into appearance. So we have system preferences open. When you click on appearance, you get several little options here. And first thing you'll see here is this is your over, you only have two colors to pick from, but if you notice, this around area here around the search bar is blue. If you simply click graphite, it changes that color. It changes the button's colors to graphite. Um, by default, it's set at blue, and it's kind of nice because it gives you colored buttons. And But you can have a play with that and see how it affects your overall appearance of your desktop. Now, the second item, the highlight color, this is basically for selected text. And you have several different choices here. Here are all your colors. And how that works is, by default, again, it's set on blue. If we open up a simple text document and you highlight it right now, currently, it comes out blue. Now, say if you want it to be yellow or gold color, that changes that, is what that does. So we're going to go ahead and put that back to blue. Now, if you this is for your scrolling arrows. And um, if you're a Windows a switcher you'll be used to them being at the top and at the bottom well by default uh, in Mac you'll see the two arrows like this will be together um, so you have the option here of separating those while you're scrolling now the click on the scroll bar um, that is when you have say a Safari page open which will go ahead and open up a Safari page and we can give you a look at that but it's basically asking you what you want to do when you click on the scroll bar. So currently it is set to jump to the next page or you can jump the spot that is clicked and I'll show you how that works. So right now we want to jump to the spot that's clicked and it takes you to that spot. You notice how the blue cursor is only moving in sections where if you're at jump to the next page that takes you all the way to the top. So you have a couple little options there. I like it here. Then you have smooth scrolling. Then you have double click a Windows title bar to minimize. Now, right now when that checked off, nothing happens. If you click on that and you click on the toolbar, there it goes. It disappears on you. So we'll come back down here to appearance. So um, you could find if that's useful or not, but that option is available to you. Now, your recent items here, uh, you have a different set of options, whether you want none showing 10, 15, 20, and so on, for your applications, your documents, and the servers. And where you'll find this is in your recent items area, which is under the Apple menu, under recent items. And these are the last recent applications that I've used. And it lists them here. And then you have your documents, and you have your servers. And you could clear this at any time. But that is how you customize that, is here in this section. You have some LCD smoothing going on here, and then you also have some font selections as well. Getting to the desktop and screensaver, what you have here is I currently have, you could see the background, which is a very uh, standard Apple um, background. And they have several different ones. And to simply change it, you just select the one you would like highlight it and then it changes your background for you and they have all kinds of different you know options here and um, you can also add your own photographs here now this machine doesn't currently have any photographs but you could certainly add those pictures here if you had those and make it more customizable these plus minus keys allow you to add additional folders as well from your documents and your finder then you have some choices here where you can change the picture you could change it by every 30 minutes, 5 seconds, once a day, or whenever. You could do a random order of pictures throughout all of these folders. And then there's the option for, if you look at the menu bar right now, it's translucent, where you can kind of see through it. When you take that off, it just becomes graphite gray and solid. So, 
Depends on how you like your setup there. Then you can also have it fill the screen. You can have it fit the screen, the stretch to fill, center, or tile. And sometimes a photograph will be kind of small that you're using. And you, if you stretch to fill, it's really not going to look really very nice. So you'll want to either center that or tile it. it. gives it quite a nice effect as well. So. So what we'll do is we'll go now to Screensaver, and again you have several different options here that came standard with your OS. The computer name, Flurries, iTunes artwork, that's for the album art, which again, this being a new machine, I have none. You have your visualizers from your RSS feeds, and just some different options. And what you do is you could test it right here, and you just release your mouse, and once you move your mouse again it comes back. And same as with the desktop, you have your choice of pictures, others that you've added, and you can click here to add stuff from your folders, mobile me gallery, or your RSS feed. Then now you can also choose to have a random screensaver, or you can have a clock displayed. And you see there, now we have the clock, which is kind of handy. And then here is your time bar. So you can start it at three minutes all the way to two hours. Or if you know you're going to be working on your machine for some time and you don't want your screensaver coming on at all, you can click to never. But I don't recommend you doing that uh, if you're going to leave your computer for any period of time uh, due to the fact that it will burn an image into your screen. So I always go with two hours if I know I'm going to be working on the machine. And the final thing is setting your hot corners. Now, for example, to start Screensaver, um, this is what you'll see when you first start. But if you wanted to set this as your hot corner, you could click Set Start Screensaver, say OK. Now when you take your mouse over to that corner and leave it, your screensaver is automatically started. So if you're walking away from your machine, slide your mouse up there, boom, screensaver starts, come back, and you are good to go. All right, moving right along to the dock. Now, the dock here, there's a couple different ways you can change the size of your icons. One is right here, and if you watch the dock at the bottom, you can see it getting larger and smaller. And then, you uh, currently, I don't have magnification on, as you can see here. If you click on magnification, as you roll over these icons, they get bigger. And you can adjust the size of this right here, where they don't get quite as big. Now, I found this to be actually... Um, very awkward that's why I have it off because several applications you'll go down to the to the document or whatever you're working on and these will pop up and block your way so I choose to leave magnification off or you could always go with a very small magnification then of course you can choose where you want your dock placed in the screen if you click to the left it appears here bottom and then to the right. Depending on what application you're using, that does come in kind of handy. Now your scale effect um, is, there's two different ways to reduce, and let's just bring up, uh, let's bring up Safari again. Now when you go ahead and reduce that down, you see how it went down in a block, like a scale? Now when we change this to the genie effect, we'll go ahead and reopen this, reduce it down, and it kind of goes in as a genie effect, like that, you see. So, um, and then now here is the trick thing that I really like as you notice we have um, three different things here next to the standard applications documents and downloads folder we have three different uh, documents here now um, if you click this button minimize window into application icon that Safari window I just reduced would go down behind the Safari icon and I'll show you how that works okay now it went down here right behind the Safari page instead of over here into the documents file. I really like that. And the last thing we'll discuss today is the way to hide your dock. And that is simply by checking this button here and there goes your dock. It disappears. And the way to bring your dock up is to bring your mouse down to the very bottom which brings your setup icons in your dock back up. So if you want a clean desktop you simply click the hide your dock and it will automatically hide the dock.